I gave blowjobs to boys who had cars, and they were grateful, <laughs> and thanked me in the window steam, and I was grateful for this hiss of pickled chlorine. At first, I was a good girl, swallowed the evidence. Then I was rebellious and spit on the upholstery. One guy thought his cum would ruin his interior, not giving a damn about my interior. All cum is not the same. It has something to do with pH balance, fatty acids, or place of origin. My husband's was balsamic, broccoli rob and burnt garlic. My tongue brought up the bitters. I often wonder what vegan cum tastes like. Tart celery without a sense of humor. <laughs> Blowjobs became my birth control. Sloppy seconds took on a whole new meaning. Still I got pregnant. Slip one in. Must have been when I had a toothache or a sore throat. My daughter smells woodsy. Her hair of deep forest. And her skin has the scent of an early morning secret. <laughs> The wedding of two passive aggressives. <laughs> Between Godfather 1, 2, and 3, and The Sopranos, I got married at Leonard's of Great Neck. Every Jew Italian from Staten Island to Brooklyn to Nassau County was in attendance. All the Anthonys were there. <laughs> Fat Anthony scoffed down hot dogs from the Nathan's famous umbrella cart. During the scoffing, he unzipped his fly and compared his sausage to theirs. His saint of a wife said a Hail Mary and zoomed in for the rescue. Slow Anthony, slow dance with Nona Millie. The cousins made fun of his kindness. Crazy Anthony sat close to the exit sign. His guardian mother dispensed his pills every hour and made sure he only drank ginger ale. The other Nona clutched the bride bag. She counted the envelopes going in, kept an accounting of the cash flow. The silk purse never left her curled hands until the night was over and all the cars left the parking lot. I wore a snow blind white wedding gown. The tit squeezing sweetheart cups created the oh so necessary cleavage. Belly fat, firmer then, was bound with beauty pageant tape bubble wrap stamped and packaged to a one-way trip to marriage town. My intended wore a white tuxedo. He looked like a hungover waiter after a long night with a light pocket of disappointing tips. <laughs> he wore white because his mother, the Bensonhurst Ice Queen, saw a, vic saw a vision of, his, of her son as a married saint in her valium infested dreams. In the bride room before the wedding planner said time was up, I smoked my last single cigarette. I went like a virgin to the slaughter, an oxymoron because I wasn't a virgin and no one died that night. But years later when a body resembling Uncle Pat's showed up in the trunk of a, an abandoned car in the Meadowlands, the FBI came to my house, requested my wedding album, and slipped it into an evidence bag. <laughs> we had a Viennese table at the wedding. This was really a big deal in the 70s. An array of miniature pastries and a chocolate fountain that, become, that, that became erect with a motorized swirl. Connie Stevens, you probably don't even know who that is, or, uh, or her doppelganger in a skin-tight reptile gown with feathers let Sal lick the chocolate goo off her lacquered manicure. Last single drink, last single smoke, last single everything. I began that long walk down the Leonard's of Great Neck Isle, needing the support of bridesmaids to support the wreck of my wake. The groom waiting for me at the front of the altar looked nauseous. <laughs> I think we were both waiting for a call from Hugh Carey, the then governor of New York State. With no hope of a stay of execution, we looked into each other's eyes, said our vows, and calculated how long it would take to undo what we just did. <laughs> He brought Bukowski, his best man, his second, to the marriage bed. He fucked her with Bukowski 
use Bukowski to break her and preach Bukowski after, after divorce fucked, courted by Bukowski, waiting on hard benches for something to happy, dry bride falls for a dog from hell. This is Bee's Fifth, that's one of his poems. Bee's Fifth, drink of, the, drink of the night, a silver shimmer married to ice cubes in a crystal pony glass. She lifts courage with elbow length satin gloves and drinks those babies down. Bee's Fifth before her wedding, hellfire drips from her mouth, meanders down into her cleavage, just missing the sweetheart plunge of her stiff cupcake gown, embroidered bee stitched with gold thread and pearls. Bee keeps, keeps a fifth under the sink with the brillo and the bug spray, and a fifth on the top shelf of her clothes closet. Wedding gown, long gone, is replaced by pleather, thigh-high boots, and faux furs. She hates leaving the apartment, the glare of Los Angeles is like a slap in the face by husband number three, Mr. Staten Island of the Guinea Tees. She has a date with a famous poet, an old harmless guy who'll pay a lot for a little, who'll write a poem for her. Yeah.